It's my pleasure now to introduce the speaker of class of 2010, Anas Abu Ismail. <laughs> Anas was born in Germany. He finished his high school in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and was one of the top five students at the level of the kingdom, the entire kingdom. During his studies in WCMCQ over the last six years, Anas worked on several research projects, such as his recent multinational study that he prepared with some of his colleagues on the effect of breastfeeding on breast cancer among Arabic women in Syria, Jordan, and Qatar. The group then presented the findings of the study during the fifth international conference for the Asian Pacific Organization for Cancer Prevention, which took place in Istanbul, Turkey in April 2010. Again, one of the many examples of increasingly our graduates presenting at international conferences and publishing in good journals. As a member of the Medical Student Education Council, Anas assisted in the founding of the Coffee House Talent Show, as President Scotton was alluding to earlier. That show is considered one of the most popular annual events at the level of the entire education city. Because of his passion for poetry and arts, in addition to his love for academics, he found the WCMCQ Poetry Club and pioneered the publication of a student book of poetry and prose, dedicated to showcase the hidden talents of our students. In addition to that, Anas found the UCAN Public Awareness and Community Service Association, which was created in an effort to organize the outreach efforts of our students and to provide structured volunteer projects for medical and pre-medical students. This past year, Anas was appointed to serve as a member of the Medical Committee on Admissions for the entire medical college. For Anas, a career in medicine is an opportunity for him to play a role in improving healthcare in the Middle East. He is going to Vanderbilt University, one of the elite universities in the US, in Tennessee, for a residency program in internal medicine. Then he hopes to take a fellowship in gastroenterology, work in academic medicine, and who knows, inshallah, back here at Hamad and Sidra and Weill Cornell Medical College. Anas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, uh, Dean Sheikh, for your kind words. Thank you all for coming. Mr. President, your excellencies, deans and faculty, students and families, good evening and welcome to the graduation of the class of 2010. It's a great honor to give the graduation speech to such a fine audience like this one. And I would like to thank my classmates for giving me this great privilege. And before I begin, I would like to give a few thanks. I would like to thank His Highness, Sumo Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, Amir Dawlati Qatar. Her Highness, Her Highness, Sumo Sheikh Hamoza bin Nasser Al Misnad, Amiratul Ilm. And the leadership of Qatar Foundation for building the city of golden dreams the place where all things are possible, our education city. <laughs> Thanks to the management and staff of Wild Cornell for being the strong wind that moved our sails at every turn of the river. <laughs> Thanks to the faculty, both medical and pre-medical, for supporting us every step of the way from high school students to medical graduates. And a big thank you to our mentors at HMC for being our teachers, our advocates, and our role models. And finally, thanks to the parents and families of the graduates, and for my family, for really making us who we are today. Thank you all. Today, while Cornell Medical College in Qatar graduates its third group of doctors, 
at a time when every corner in the Middle East is at the brink of war, at a time of great recession, at a time when healthcare and education around the world are not rights but privileges, we the students stand as beacons of hope and promises of change. Walk through the roads of our education city, talk to its students, and it will be clear to you that something is changing here. We no longer accept the status quo of sitting on the bench and waiting for scientific breakthroughs to happen elsewhere. We no longer accept being dependent on others to answer the questions of the 21st century. As graduating physicians, we hope to be part of this new wave. And we promise to do all we can to help rekindle the flame of scientific innovation, medical discovery, and social justice in our part of the world. and to help return the glory of old times, the times when our forefathers studied the anatomy of the eye and used calcium channel blockers to treat heart disease centuries ago, the times of opportunity and prosperity. I look at every one of my graduating colleagues, and I quote U.S. President Barack Obama to tell you, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the hope of those boys who are told that they cannot be what they imagined, because they can, just like we did. You know, a few years ago, I got a phone call from Maysoon, telling me that I've been accepted to the pre-medical program. I began to wonder what this program was all about, and what sorts of people I would meet. To be honest, I was expecting to meet a group of boring and socially isolated nerds. <laughs> I was wrong except for the nerds part. <laughs> Orientation week is boldly written in my memory, but written using very different words and expressions than the ones I use today. It was funny how people distributed themselves that day based on perceived similarities, like language, nationality, and what high school you came from. Comparing that map with today's leaves me in awe at how much we moved beyond those shallow bonds to much deeper ones. Medical school has changed us so much. The way we think, the way we feel, and even the way we talk. For example, it's hard for me to look at a third year medical student and not think of him as a 23 year old patient presenting with insomnia and irritability. <laughs> Plan, refer to psychiatry. <laughs> Ironically, this happens in every third year clerkship except psychiatry, during which students present with weight gain and excessive sleep. Plan, send back to medicine. <laughs> and you know you've gone far in medical school when you greet visitors by, so what brings you here today? And you ask them if they have any allergies before you give them food. It all began during pre-med, when we were put under intense pressure and temperature, like molecules of gas being forced to condense. And like our physics and chemistry laws predicted, a new spirit emerged in our class, one of unity and pride. 2010, it's dynamite, don't mess with dynamite, we used to chant. Together, we traveled the world, from the most impoverished villages of India to the richest parts of Manhattan. The next two years flew by. There were those defining moments, of course, like the first anatomy lab drama, the Great Depression of Brain and Mind, and the horror of the USMLE. <laughs> After that, we made our first steps into the world of clinical practice. Third year was crazy. If I can sum it up in one sentence, it would be, how on earth did we do it? How did we survive the surgery on calls, the medicine rounds, the OBGYN patients? Six years. Six years on an emotional roller coaster. We laughed, we cried, we fought. We helped each other, but we did it together as a group. There is a force. <laughs> there is a force that binds our group. Wherever we go, whoever we meet, we will always be bound by one entity, Facebook.
And so today is the day we've been waiting for. But now that it arrived, I wonder if it did so too soon. I wonder if we're really ready for what comes next. Goodbyes. These words we prepare ourselves for, and yet they take us by surprise. These heavy words that dry the throat and wet the eyes, those bitter goodbyes. It's not easy not to know when we will meet again, if at all. It's not easy not to know whether we will meet new people who will make us feel as safe and secure as we do now. We've grown so used to one another that the thought of drifting apart is inconceivable. But my friends, true friendship, true brotherhood, true love, whatever you prefer to call it, will always find a way. Somewhere down the road, our path will cross again. Somewhere in the mind of destiny, our tale will not be forgotten. My friends, my brothers and sisters, and more, as of today, you are responsible for your own life and for that of others. Now, this can be both thrilling and intimidating. But whatever life throws at you, I want to remind you of a story of the prophet when he was hiding with his companion in a cave in the desert. And a search team approached their cave. His companion was afraid. And so the prophet looked at him and said, La tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana. Do not be disheartened. God is with us. And so if you're ever going through some difficult times, I hope you would remember this story every day. And if the night seems dark, may the moonlight illuminate your way. And if there is no moon, may the stars show you the way. And if you see no stars, may your heart find the courage to say, do not be disheartened, God is with us. May God bless you all, may God bless you all, and may God bless medicine. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really beautiful. You did good, Anas, you did good. You also, while remaining true to the message, reminded me the value of youth again, my friend. Uh, what happens is as you age, it's not only the arteries which stiffen, but it's also the, your smile which stiffens. So I was sitting there thinking, curmudgeons like me need to lighten up a little bit. So thank you for enlivening the proceedings, okay? Thank you. Uh,